So when we last left off on the app, um, we were able to save. We were able to save data and view data. And um, so we were able to save, we were able to view. So we're getting back the data. I've got one comic so far. Remember, as I said, what you want to do is you, as you set yourself up, you want to have a little bit of information, a comic or two that is there so that you can uh, fully edit this, fully have data to work with. So we're going to uh, set it up so that we're able to click on that um, info icon and we'll get a pop-up that happens that shows you the rest of the information I typed for this entry. Now if you saw a moment ago, I uh, just saved a comic and all of its information is there and I, and I want to see that. I want to see that I wrote my note first issue, it's from DC Comics, etc. I have that information that I want to see. Um, so that's partly what the info is going to be. We, we'll click on info, we get a pop-up, it'll show us the other information, as well as a photo when we eventually do photos and barcodes. But um, viewing the comic from that little info screen is also going to be very useful. Oops, I mistyped the title. Uh, there, there isn't an extra R in the name of the comic, so I want to go back and edit that. The info pop-up will have multiple purposes. One is to view the info, one is to edit the info, and then if we need to, to actually delete it. If we don't have that comic in our, um, in our collection anymore, we want to delete an individual comic. So let's set up this whole info, view info. Let's get back to index.js. We'll look at our JavaScript file. Uh, near the end of our code, let's see. Delete collection. Okay, when we had show comics table, let's do one quick thing here, then we'll get started with the new code. If you look at, at line approximately 423, this is where we are setting up the individual rows of each comic. Our for loop is letting us loop for a certain number of times as long as we have some amount of data, a length of the data. We create a new row every time, we put the title on the screen, etc., etc., as many comics as we have. I said, let's add this item to then have it be useful for us when we get to view the comic or edit the comic, which is what we'll do. Data-ID. We created our own HTML5 data attribute, and that data attribute that we invent can store any data we want at all. And the point of this is that we are storing in the HTML, in that table, on screen, um, well, behind the scenes, we're storing the ID related to this row of comics of this particular title. So using that, we'll be able to know which comic in question are we talking about? We're clicking on this row, meaning this comic. Well, the comic is going to be defined by its ID, and that ID is shown on screen. Uh, sorry, not on screen, but it's shown in, it's uh, dynamically created in the, HT, in the HTML. Using that info, um, we're going to set up our uh, event listener to wait for the click of that info. Um, that info icon. So let's go down all the way to where we've got all of our event listeners. Now I noticed here um, we had one up here, save comic. 
uh, sign up, log in, log out, delete collection. Uh, doesn't really matter, they're all in the same place, but maybe actually I want the <coughs> pouch DB code end. They're all event listeners, they're all in the right place, but maybe we should have put the delete collection right after save comic, just because in our notes, in our, in our code there, we've got pouch code ends. So I'm going to do this. Obviously, it's a, it's a super simple thing. I'm going to uh, cut and paste to move it up before our ending of our pouch DB. So I cut outline uh, whatever that is already there, 483, 484. I cut it. Don't copy and paste. Cut and paste. You need to move it up just to keep it together. The pouch related stuff is there. Non pouch is here. The order of it doesn't really matter, but I just want to keep it all together because after that one, I'm going to add event listener to um, show the info pop up. I'm going to keep together the pouch stuff. The, the point here is that I've moved it up simply to group it together conceptually. The concept is going to be that I'm going to click on something pouch related, so I've got it there. Okay, so a little bit of a refresher here. If we had, you don't have, well, you can write this for notes, but this isn't our real code yet. Var thing, um, well, dollar L <coughs> BTN thing, just to keep on the same style we've done before, is equal to dollar selector quotes pound. Uh, BTN thing. So we've done this several times before. We have the uh, declaration. We're about to create a variable, an object, based on jQuery, because we've got the dollar. And we use the jQuery selector to find an instance of something with an ID, a BTN thing. OK, well, we could have dollar L BTN many things equal to dollar quotes dot btn many things big difference but one little character different pound sign versus a dot so this first one uh, jquery selecting one ID element. The second one is jQuery selecting many class elements. All through the course at this point, you, uh, selecting an ID has worked for us perfectly. There's one button that we click to delete the whole database. There's one button that we click on to log in. There's one button that does everything we've needed to do so far. So what we've done before has been fine. OK, well, we have something slightly different now. We have rows in a table of multiple comics. When I've got five comics saved, or 500 comics saved, I've got five rows in a table. And all of those rows have that little speech bubble at the end. Now, we could, just like I've said before, there's many ways to skin the digital cat. 
there's many ways to write our code to accomplish what we need to do. We could include an incrementing value per row that creates a unique ID per number. That would work fine. Or we could use a class. We could use one class many times, um, coupled with the unique ID of the comic in question to delineate it, the comic in question. So we're going to do something like this. We're going to use a class. We're going to select a class uh, to mean one of these rows of comics. This is just uh, example code. It's pseudocode. Make sure you comment it out. It's not going to be real. There's nothing in our code called button thing or button many things. It's just example code the idea that's just there to illustrate the idea of what we're going to do. We're going to set ourselves up so that any instance of that speech bubble will be an active clickable thing. Whereas previously we had the login button which was one instance of that one clickable thing. We need to set up a way so that any of those speech bubbles is clickable. And then, of course, we'll be able to tell which one we clicked on based on the ID. So we need to go back and modify our code just a little bit, where we added the, um, where we made the rows at a time to include that class. Let's see. So we'll back up. So we'll back up to our code just a little bit over here. Back up to the line 423 again. This is where we're creating the row at a time. Show its title, show its number, show the icon. OK, well, we're going to attach a class to the icon, to the, to the icon's cell so that any of those possible icons is, is targetable, is clickable. So we've got that cell. There's the icon. This is a cell that holds that icon. We're going to attach a class to that cell. Make sure those are single quotes. Single quotes because we're in a we're in a string of double quotes. Okay, we're we're gonna attach a class to a cell. Remember, IDs only one thing, and all of our code can have that ID. Classes can be used one or one thousand times in our code. I'm gonna call this btn show comics info. Oops, make sure that's in the quotes. It's not exactly a button as we've been making buttons before, but it'll serve the purpose of a button. You will see uh, that little info icon. You'll, a person's going to click on it as a button. So we'll just call it, this is a button. This is a button to show comics info. I click on that speech bubble button. It'll pop up. Well, we need uh, some way to anchor the code to that, so we'll give it a class. And the point of this is that it's going to have a, uh, it's going to have, um, it's going to be a class which can be reusable throughout, multiple times throughout our code. Just to show you what this looks like, you can run it if you want. I'm going to save a few more comics. Yeah, I'm not going to get fancy at the moment. Just want data. You can, of course, write real data if you want, but that's a waste of time at the moment. Just going to put four comics or so, because I've got four comics, four different rows of data. 
in my element inspector. inspector once I find uh, this particular table there are these rows we saw this before each row of data has an ID built in data ID has been filled in it's the ID in the pouch database so unique IDs okay then per row each row then has a cell this cell TD 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 so the, um, the comic AA, there it is, this cell, AA, issue number one, the class which has the icon, uh, I mean the row, the cell that has the icon, and then the class, BTN show comics info. And all four of these rows at the moment should have that same class. So this comic also, ZZ. ZZ comic has that class. So now there, all of these have a class that we can latch onto via jQuery to specify. When you click on any one of these speech bubbles, run some JavaScript. We have an anchor to attach ourselves to. Does everyone see something like that, perhaps? No errors in your code so far, hopefully. Okay, so that's setting ourselves up to then write the event handler. Uh, we've had the event handlers before where we are uh, waiting for a button click. We'll have something similar, a little more complex, because if I were to click on this one, obviously I can tell I'm clicking on the info for comic ZZ. But unless I program it, the system doesn't know. Do you mean the row of ZZ or the row of AA or the row of Catwoman? So we have to specify which row. I'm clicking on a row, and then I have to specify which row. It's this one that I've clicked on with this built-in data. Back to our JavaScript. Okay, so back to the event listener we were about to write. Line 476 or so. So just to just to again kind of write a little bit of pseudo code, this is not real code just yet. If we had the, the jQuery selector. We could say dot btn, what do we call this? btn show comic info. That's the class we set up on the line above. ETN show comics info. Dot on click comma function show comics info. Okay, so this code looks correct conceptually, perhaps because it looks very similar to the code we had up here in that there is something we're clicking on to run a function. Uh, here we're doing the shortcut actually that um, whereas this one up here uh, we first did var dollar l button delete collection equals the selector. We kind of jumped ahead without creating the object and here we're saying okay uh, in the HTML, there's a node with this class. When we click it, run a function. 
Again, the problem is, well, which of the four do you mean? I've got four comics in the table. And this code sort of seems like it'll work because it says, when you click on something that has this class, run this function. I've got four things with the exact function. And secondly, actually, this is not, these classes don't actually exist on runtime. Um, when you run your code in the app, uh, all of the HTML is created and it exists in the app. But some of this code doesn't exist until the JavaScript runs. And the JavaScript runs after the HTML. So technically here we're also trying to select something that doesn't exist yet. So there's several issues here. Code below doesn't work because number one, it is selecting um, HTML nodes that don't exist on runtime. At the moment the code runs, this class doesn't exist. Number one, you're trying to select something that doesn't exist. That's one problem. Number two, which of the rows of comic data does it refer to? In my case, I've got four. It can't refer to all four at once. And that's technically what I'm saying there. On any one of those rows, click on it, run a function. Well, I, I don't know which one do you mean. Catwoman row, Z0, AA row. So two big problems. So what we need instead, first target an existing element, then target the specific element. We'll call it node element, same thing. First uh, target an existing node. then target the specific node. So what does exist at runtime is the placeholder div that eventually the table is put into. That table doesn't exist until JavaScript runs, but the HTML runs first, then the JavaScript. Well, if we select first the HTML element or the node that does exist, then we can select the uh, JavaScript element that exists after. So we can say $L div show comics table on click so the div that will show the comics does exist at the moment of runtime therefore we can select it we can click on it well technically what we're saying here is anywhere that you click anywhere in the whole table is an active click an active hotspot for you to click Okay, well, comma, quotes, dot, btn, show, comics, info. Now, be careful here. Comics, comic, whatever you called it. Keep consistent on that. I call it comics, plural. If you called it, if you called it btn, show, comic, above, and now you're calling it comics here, you're going to get an error. I've seen this several times in this semester. Remember your plurals. And your singulars, did you write comic or comics? And I'm guilty of that, I forget all the time. But you double check your code. <coughs> then comma, run the function. Function. <coughs> um, function uh, view 
a function show comics info. Okay, so here our event listener looks different from before. We have a, a third, or a second in the sequence, but we have a third parameter. Up there we had, when there's a click, run a function. Up here, uh, that save comic we had on, we had submit, which would have been sort of like on submit, run a function. And here we had on click, run a function. Here we're saying, click on the table, specifically anything that has that class, run a function. So that's what we need to do here. Um, now we are able to um, select those cells with those classes inside the table to run a function. But still, we, we haven't quite specified which of the rows do we mean. So let's actually break this to the next line. This is going to be a longer line here. This is valid. Um, after this parameter, comma, another parameter, comma, another parameter. This is valid for us to break it here for readability. We could have broken these into multiple lines, too. I'll break this one into one more line because it's going to be a long line. Similar to what we had up here previously when we when we submitted when we saved a comic, we submitted a form. And remember there was a default behavior to submitting a form. Um, here it's not exactly the default behavior, but what we need to specify is, again, which of the particular comics are we talking about. So let's back up before that function, and we're going to write anonymous function, open close parentheses, open cl close curly brace. Um, and then this function that we're trying to call, it's going to go inside the curly braces. So anonymous, anonymous function, run a named function. The point of this is to do something like we had up here. Run a named function so that we can capture the event. Run a named function so that we can capture which ID which, which row do we mean specifically? So go back and add parentheses here. The line up here does not have parentheses, and it does not allow parentheses unless you wrap an anonymous function around it first. Up here, where we had function save comic event, we needed to wrap an anonymous function around it. We didn't need a parameter in this function, so no parentheses, no anonymous function. Here we need the parentheses so that we can pass in which row do we mean, so it must be in an anonymous function. Inside those parentheses, dollar parentheses, this. Uh, via jQuery, we mean this row that we've clicked on. I've got four rows to pick from. I've picked this one. I've selected, I, I mean this one that I clicked on. Literally, this one that I clicked on. The Catwoman row, or the AA row, or the ZZ row, I mean I clicked on this row. This is jQuery um, selecting this row, uh, this uh, technically this cell that I clicked on, so we're passing it into the function. Uh, be careful here with the parentheses and such, you can easily lose track. You've got the parentheses opening and closing for the function, and you've got the 
jQuery dollar and parentheses selector, and then this not in quotes. So that's that object. Dot parent. So this needs notes. Um, first target an existing node, then target the specific node, then run a function where we pass in the specific row using this selector. And then run a function where we pass in the specific row actually or more specifically say more specifically the parent element of where we clicked on this means this cell that I clicked on. Find a table with this name, then find an element with this class. Find a, find a table with this ID, then find a cell. Find an element with this class, which happens to be a cell. We attach classes to the cell. Okay, then run a function. And we're going to pass into the function ultimately the whole row. Because you've got a cell which is inside of a row. You've got a you've got a cell which is inside of a row, which is ultimately inside of a table. So here we doing something pretty advanced because um, we're, we're specifying which node, parent, uh, parent node, child node, um, sibling nodes, and all of that. There's um, elements inside of elements. So if you think about like in our sign-in sheet, this is a table, as I said before. The whole thing is the table, the table tag, right? Then we've got TR, a row of data. Another TR, another TR. We've got columns and all of that, but then there's a cell, TD. So this is a TR, this cell, right? Uh, this, this whole row, table row. And I mean to click on this cell, TD. Well, all of these cells right here have the class. So I'm saying click on any one of them, but I meant this one, so it's that cell. And then dot parent, I meant the whole row. So we're sort of passing the whole row of data into the function. That way we can then read the data ID attached to the row. So, next comes defining that function. Function show comics. Function show comics. Let's back up to after we've uh, created delete, function delete comic. Function to show the uh, full info of the comic we clicked on. Okay, so here we're defining that function. As we say here, let's run a function after clicking on this cell in this table. And I meant to pass in the data of the whole row. Passing it into the function, calling it shorthand this comic. The whole row 
is um, then passed in as the object name this comic to see if this is working we'll do two console outputs one the usual that we're doing is saying that the function is running function show comics info is running second we're gonna have another console to see the data in question this comic check your error list run it in your device or browser check for errors try clicking on a row try clicking on a, a speech bubble of a row check your console and see if it shows you the raw data of that full table I mean of that full row if it does great we're on track if it doesn't we'll fix your error and then we'll further make this work let me check mine to see if mine's working and we'll pause to see if yours is working so here's what I would expect let's see no errors at the moment view comic I'm gonna click on the Catwoman row it pops up here it shows that my function comics is running it shows a table row if you further d drill down in here you're gonna see the full the full data somewhere here yeah so um, if you if you then see a row of data like that you open up the zero width um, index and there should be um, inner HTML there's the raw data this is the cell etc etc If I click on a different row, it pops up to show me in the console. Here is the ZZ row. And if I uh, click anywhere except the speech bubble, it should not react. If you were to click on the name of the comic and you get some output, it's not quite right. You should only be able to click on the speech bubble. You won't get the little hand that shows you it's clickable. That's okay, because eventually it's going to be on a device. There's no mouse pointer on a device, so that doesn't matter. You should only be able to click on the speech bubble to get a reaction. If you click anywhere else, there's something not quite right. And then you can go in and drill down through the data, and you should see in the zero width index the data, the raw data. We'll pause right there if it didn't quite work, but that's our code so far. Um, anyone need a little help to get that? <coughs> okay, let me just zoom in right here. The big problem is probably going to be some little misspelling right around here.
Now that's coming from. Back up in a moment, but that's coming from the row. Yes, to what we need. There we are. Just to confirm you now. Hold down and look at the sound. 
All right, so uh, if you see something like that, if you see a whole bunch of data, good. You are seeing that at the very least, we have our event listener. We have a way to click on a dynamic element because as soon as the app loaded, the HTML code loaded up and that cell did not exist. Now we see it right away because then afterwards the JavaScript is processed. Um, and if there were comic data, then the rows are created and then each cell is created and then the class is attached. So in the order of things, there was no class, there was no element with that class as soon as the project ran. That's why we have um, select the select the whole div, then you're able to select the row, uh, the cell in a row. Uh, so then the uh, event handler runs and it runs um, in your console. Now I'm going to recommend uh, get in the habit perhaps of clearing your console before you do anything else just so that you don't have all of that extra code floating around there in your console. You have a clean console. Um, okay, then I, then I click and I see okay the function is running, great, and then I see a big old uh, string of info right here and if you then look inside of that in the zero width uh, element you see the raw data. If you see that, this is the this is the HTML in the element you clicked on. There it is. There's the actual text inside of that. Catwoman one, and then the icon. And up here, this has the data, the data ID attached to it. Cat eleven ninety nine. So I am seeing the raw data. And before you click on anything else, I would recommend close that because then you're going to see pages and pages of data. Just close that and then look at the next one click on the next one then you can click and view and same sort of thing in this case I clicked on row ZZ with its ID of ZZ 33 so if that's working at least we can proceed okay back to our show comics info We next need to um, work with this uh, data, work with this particular comic in question. Okay, we're going to create a variable inside of this function that stores which fun which uh, comic are we talking about? Um, variable to store which comic we are talking about. based on ID. Call this temp comic. That's equal to this comic dot data ID. So we have the data method that its purpose is to read or write um, any attribute, any data attribute. So dot data reads, writes, uh, data dash whatever in an HTML node. So the data method. We have a row, tr. You can sort of think about this as the whole tr. tr. Uh, search, go check data dash id, find out what that is, and store it in here. So this is reading, 
Actually, I have to double check. Does it also write? It definitely reads, but I have to double check if it writes. <coughs> this, uh, this data method reads anything data dash whatever. So if this were an element that were that had data dash role, right? We have data role, data icon, data transition. We would have had data quotes transition, and then we would have read which transition, which animation does this button have? So this is checking data dash whatever, and the whatever is in quotes here. This is not underscore ID because underscore ID is inside of the is inside deep in the in the database, and we're technically not really uh, checking in the database at that moment. All that we're doing is uh, find me the data dash ID and, and store it from the uh, HTML. To confirm that. I'll show it in the console. Go ahead and save and run it. You should see every time you click on any row in the console, well, let's be obvious here and say this row, this tr has a data dash id of, and then whatever your particular one is. So save it and run it. You'll get console messages whenever you click on any icon of a row, what the ID is per row, and each console will say that. So go ahead and, and save it and run it and see if you get that if you get that feedback. See if mine works. Okay, view a comic. I click on a row. It pops up what I had before, and then it pops up this row has a data ID of cat eleven ninety nine, and I can confirm that by looking at here in the zero with data. There is a data ID cat 1999. If I click on a different comic, this row has a data ID of AA 11999. And I can confirm in the raw data A 11999. Save a brand new comic. View comics. A brand new. Uh, I have a brand new row. I click on that. The tr that I clicked on. W o n one two three one nine five zero. And confirming that in the raw data. Data ID is w o n one two three one nine five zero. All right, let's take our first break to see um, if this is working. Take your break. If not, we'll, we'll check your code. And then right after this, well, we're uh, then proceeding into um, showing all of the data on in the info pop-up in just a moment.